All right, what's going on, everybody? So this is my top 10 games of 2018. Now, before I get to the list, quick disclaimer. This year wasn't the greatest year for me in terms of how many games I beat. Last year, I beat about 30 games. This year, I did a count, and I think it, I think it was like maybe 14. Because this year, there just didn't happen to be that many games that I liked. So pretty much, I'm picking uh, a list of 10 games out of 14. So you can imagine some of these games literally only made it on the list because there just wasn't that many games this year that I happened to like and beat, unfortunately. So had a few of these games that are on my list come out in any other year, a few of them would probably have never made my list. But because of the circumstances of this year, then yeah, they're making my list. So let, let's get to it. So number 10, is NBA 2K Playgrounds 2. Now, even though I like NBA Playgrounds um, 2, the fact that this has even made it into my top 10 clearly shows you it's slim pickings, okay? Um, listen, the game was fun. It was it was arcadey, you know, it was flashy, and I enjoyed it for that reason. It was, you know, it was it was cheap fun. Listen, it was it was pretty much to round out the number 10 spot, it was either this or Shadow of the Tomb Raider. And Shadow of the Tomb Raider, I was just so disappointed in that game. I just wouldn't feel right putting that on my top 10 list, okay? I felt disrespected and just very underwhelmed by what that game turned out to be. At least NBA, you know, 2K Playgrounds 2 was exactly what it should have been. It's a, you know, cheap little fun uh, downloadable title, quick game, you know, some arcade basketball fun. So that game turned out what it was, you know, uh, it was fun for the moment. I had fun playing, playing online and everything like that. They made improvements over the last game. So yeah, you know, I, I thought it was a, a, a decent game. Uh, I doubt there'll be an NBA, you know, Playgrounds 3, but you know, 2 did make some improvements. So let's move on to number 9. Number 9 was Unravel 2. I was a big fan of the, the first game and I know some people you know, probably wouldn't give this game a chance or the time of day because of its appearance. But the main thing I like about it is the physics-based puzzles. I think this game has, a, has you know, just great level design and, and, and great puzzles um, and just a great overall presentation. The game looks absolutely, you know, gorgeous. And, you know, it has like an underlying theme, not necessarily a story, but like a theme. So, you know, and this is something that I actually played with my wife and... You know, she's not really a gamer, but she just happened to pick up the controller and, and start um, and start playing. And she caught on really quick. And this the, what's different about, you know, this one from the from the first game is they've catered the puzzles uh, for a co-op experience. So even though you don't have to play in co-op, you still have to utilize and solve the puzzles in a way that utilize um, both a, a, of the characters. Um, and the physics-based puzzles. So, you know, I, I just really like the game. So that's uh, my number nine game. Uh, my number eight game is going to be Shadow of the Colossus. So um, Shadow of the Colossus to me is, it's a top five game of all time. But the reason it's in my top, you know, it, it's it's higher on, it's, or well, rather lower on my list, depending on how you look at it, uh, is because I'm not measuring this game like it's, you know, like it's it's an original release, okay? So, you know, I played it all the way uh, at the, all the way back then when it initially came out. You know, I was amazed by it then. It is an amazing remake. You know, love the story. I love the improvement improvement to the visuals. Uh, you know, I just love um, the, the, the challenge of like taking on each of these colossi and how each one is like modeled uh, different and the mystery in the game and how the colossi are just like these giant monsters that you have to take down. It's like a giant obstacle obstacle course and scaling them. I, th I just think that's an amazing experience. But yeah, so like I said, the only reason it's at number eight is because this is something I've experienced before and I'm not like putting the, putting the game at the same weight as an original release. But you know, yeah, I, I absolutely love that game. It's probably always gonna be in my top five games uh, favorite games of all time. So yeah, that's number, that's number eight. Number seven is Darksiders 3. Um, this game has, uh, you know, it has 
split, very split opinions. Some people have said it's terrible. Some people have said it's amazing. Usually when you have such a split crowd, and it, it's always interesting that a few people, because there's not a lot of games where some people say, you know, uh, you have so many people saying they love it, and then so many people saying it's garbage, right? Usually a game is usually a little bit more one-sided. Usually a little bit more one-sided. And when you look at Metacritic, now even though I don't put any weight into Metacritic, because you know, that's that's nothing but other people's opinions, but out of curiosity, I look there sometimes, and Darksiders 3 has literally has every score from a two to a nine. So people are obviously having very different opinions. I'm on the side where it's on it's on the spectrum of being a better game. I had a very good experience. I mean, I like the voice acting. I like Fury as a character. Um, I, I like the combat system. Uh, I like the fact that you had to to back travel. I like the difficulty, the challenge, the the the, the bosses. I, I like I like most things about this game, and the reason honestly it's it's like number what was I up to seven I think I think I was up to seven number seven on the list is because it's a little there are some bugs I ran into a pretty game breaking bug that I'm actually waiting for them to fix so it it is with its technical problems but I think the, the gameplay is very fun and solid it's like like I explained in my impressions. It's a old school God of War and Souls type game. So yeah, I've really been enjoying it. So yeah, it's number seven for me. Number six is Call of Duty Black Ops 4. Now everybody knows, I've said a lot of times, I'm not necessarily your typical Call of Duty fan. I don't even consider myself a Call of Duty fan. So if I give this game credit, you know it has to be at least decent. And I think, you know, they just did a great job of Call of Duty. Call of Duty Black Ops 4, specifically on the PC version. I felt like using the mouse and keyboard made a huge difference for me. I really enjoyed that experience. I thought the online was pretty balanced. It had good maps. You know, blackout mode was really fun. You know, it honestly, uh, it is the best battle royale mode game out right now. You know, the only thing people would debate that with is Fortnite. And even with that, it just comes down to a matter of taste. And, you know, if you don't want, like, you know, the funky stylings of, uh, of Fortnite, you'll probably just prefer Blackout. You know, like, even though I start I started um, playing PUBG on PC, you loved it. You know, you really have no reason to play PUBG uh, if Blackout is available. The, the only, like, difference is I would say PUBG is a little bit more um, tense and uh, suspenseful. But we know as far as, like, performance and visuals, looks worse than Blackout, looks worse... You know, then Fortnite runs worse than those. And like I said, overall, I just enjoyed um, all the other multiplayer modes outside of the Blackout mode. And, you know, it didn't really bother me that there wasn't any, uh, you know, conventional story. So, um, yeah, Black uh, Call of Duty Black Ops 4 is number six. Number five is Detroit Become Human. So, you know, I, tip, I, I, I love Quantic Dreams games. I... I thought Heavy Rain was really good. Um, for the record, they are better at what they do than super massive games, even though people, you know, like to hate on Quantic Dream and slander them. They are the best in the business at creating these story um, driven, you know, interactive, uh, interactive narrative games and everything, whatever exactly you want to specify it as. They are the best at what they do. Okay, and I think Detroit Become Human I really enjoyed the story. So, uh, parts of the story were a little bit too on the nose with its like comparisons to like, you know, the uh, you know discrimination and 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 civil rights and all that stuff. It was a little bit too on the, on the nose. They could have been a little bit more subtle with it because that made, would have made it a little bit more clever. And sometimes it does bother me when video games use actual real life actors and their and their likeness. And, uh, I mean, pretty much, the, you know, their actual, you use that person for mocap and all that, uh, because it kind of takes me out of the game. It takes, you know, takes away the immersiveness for me, especially if I know that character, that, that, that actor, and I've watched a show with that actor, because, you know, I watched Grey's Anatomy where, um, I can't remember his act his actual name. Um, but the guy who plays as, um, well, shit, he's, he's, what was, he's Avery Jackson, I believe, in Grey's Anatomy. 
um, and he plays Marcus in um, in Detroit Become Human. I can't remember his, his his real name, but you know, when I'm playing this game, all I can see is the character from you know the, the TV show. So sometimes I don't like when they do that. But the visuals, probably amazing visuals, one of the best look best cleanest looking games we've seen great voice acting it had a very expansive you know possibility tree with different decisions that led to different endings and i think it even though there was one main character that i really cared about you know their story i really cared about overall all three were still pretty decent and and, and fun to play as so yeah detroit become human was uh and and it took me a while to get into the game. I had it for a while, but I just wasn't in the mood to, to play that type of game. But once I got in the mood to play it, I, I couldn't put it down. You know, so I really, I really enjoyed Detroit Become Human. So that was number five. Number four is Battlefield Five. Now, listen, of course, I just put out my Battlefield Five review, so I don't got to get too deep into this. I know it's the thing to hate EA because they're a scum company. Uh, trust me, I agree. They are a scum company, but that does not make Battlefield 5 a bad game. The multiplayer is fun. It's balanced. It's it's a good game. I mean, the war stories did falter a little bit in comparison to its predecessor. Um, the, the war story that came out post-launch, where you play as the Nazi commander, was probably the most riveting story. It was probably the best one. Um, but overall, as a package, they were they were decent, even though they weren't as good as the first one, uh, as the ones in Battlefield 1. But like I said, vi of course, visuals look great, even though I feel like they've hit a ceiling as far as that goes. Um, the multiplayer is definitely fun. It's something I'm going to continue to play. So yeah, i just I just been enjoying Battlefield 5, and it's definitely a, a good game. When you separate the game and the product away from its evil company. Okay, so yeah, Battlefield 5 is number four. Number three is Red Dead Redemption 2. Now, as much as people think I hate this game, I don't. It's number three, okay? I'm just objective enough that I can clearly see the good points with this game and the bad points. This game has a lot of pros, but it has several cons also that really diminish and really ruin the experience no matter how people want to be in denial about it the game once again has terrible controls terrible aiming terrible movement okay terrible input lag some of this stuff can be proven it's not even opinion no more anybody who's still in denial about it that's exactly what you are in denial i don't know what to tell you so and in, in, in my review i probably made my longest review I've ever made it was like 22 minutes for Red Dead because it's such such a huge game in scope and I explained you know very descriptively all the flaws in it and some people still couldn't understand and, and I still gave the game an 8.8 .8, which is not a not a bad score at all it just wasn't a masterpiece because of its flaws but this is this is a game I still enjoyed it was just like everything you do was kind of tainted because everything you do in the game is affect it it includes movement it includes aiming you know so if that if those mechanics are interwoven into everything you do it affects the entire game so that was my only you know that was my problem with red dead but the story the story is top notch in red dead the score you know the score and the music is good the story is better than the gameplay, honestly. You know, and, and and there's a lot of like, you know, there's a lot of smoke and mirrors when it comes to Red Dead that people uh, sometimes don't see because they're so, you know, Rockstar does this trick where they put so much in the game um, and they wow you with the size of their game that it people kind of miss other things where it's very empty and very uh and very vain and has has no substance right so but i saw through that but you know like i said i i enjoy, i still did enjoy red dead so it's number three for me number two is spider-man spider-man was pretty much my game of the year runner-up 
you already know my game of the year, so you know what number one is going to be. Spider-Man had, you know, good combat. It had a... Spider-Man was the most fun game of the year, okay? Because when you just tap into the dimension of fun, not every... A, a lot of games offer something different. And a lot of people, you know, interpret fun differently. But Spider-Man wasn't the best game of the year, but it was absolutely the most fun. It, it was probably more fun than what my actual game of the year is, right? When we're talking about the pure essence of fun, you know, just joy of doing something. And you know, web swinging, combat, um, you know, the, the, the fun, semi-original story, you know, they took some liberties with it. All that was enjoyable. The core of the game was enjoyable. The, the the fault that it had was like kind of these empty side missions that got really repetitive, especially if you were going to get the platinum. If they were able to di diversify their, you know, their side missions and everything like that a little bit more, um, then it wouldn't have gotten tiresome and, re and repetitive and just mundane. But, you know, they kind of uh, unfortunately fell uh, victim to what a, a lot of open world, well, sandbox games to be specifically, what a lot of sandbox games, because this is sandbox, it's not open world, we're just in Manhattan, a lot of games like this um, fall victim to. But other than that, Spider-Man was just a, a very fun experience. If it wasn't for web swinging, if they didn't get the web swinging right, a lot of other things in this game would not have been tolerable. You know, because the other things you had to do, you only didn't mind doing it because web swinging was so good. You know, they they got that perfect, so everything else made was just more manageable to do. So yeah, I, I enjoy enjoyed Spider Man, and it was just you know pure fun when you think about what that really means. And number one for me, so Spider Man was number two. Number one is God of War. Do I really have to explain this? God of War was a masterpiece in every sense of the word. Okay story controls you know concise movement you know art it had these somewhat deep rpg elements um it had nuance to it you know with the armor sets and the um and 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 all the the you know the the magic um and, and special moves you can unlock and it just had a lot of depth that i didn't expect and a lot of people didn't expect with the amount of content and, you know, with the amount of management you had to do uh, as far as, you know, managing Kratos, you know, and, and, and his attributes, right? So it just got really, it, the game just had a lot of depth. Great story, you know, great visuals, um, just, a, just an amazing experience and, and project. You know, it, it's clearly a standout of this generation, probably the best game of this generation in, in my opinion. Um, like I said, we'll have to see what Last of Us and a few other games, you know, might might dethrone it. But only fault with God of War probably was uh, not as many bosses. You know, it had a lot of mini bosses that were like duplicates with a with just small alterations made to them. But God of War was was absolutely amazing. Um, so yeah, that is my top ten um, games of the year. A few of these that are on the list I'm not exactly proud of. Like I said, some of these probably wouldn't have made it on my list if they had come out any other year. But it's been that type of year. I don't think this is the best. This this wasn't the best year um, of gaming as far as like there weren't a whole lot of amazing games. There were a few amazing games and the rest of them were just okay. So, yeah, um, I am going to be making the list for my... Um, top my top 10 most anticipated games for 2019 that's going to come out sometime this week too so make sure you check that out uh in the comment section let me know what your top 10 games are list them out in the comment section make sure you hit the like button um make sure you know check out the links in the description and uh follow me on all the social media links make sure you subscribe hit the uh, notification bell so you can know anytime i go live and uh yeah i will check y'all next time i'm out of here y'all peace